Hi, I'm Brian Ronalds. I'm the filmmaker on this documentary. This film was brought to me three or four years ago by my son's grandfather. And at first I didn't know what to think. But after studying and examining and taking a closer look, it hit home. My heart, my mind. It's about the United Nations Security Council Resolution 666. The United Nations Security Council Resolution started in 1946. On September 13th, 1990, the United Nations Security Council Resolution 666 was written and formed. And without going too deep into it, why, why, why don't we just take a look? It defined humanitarian aid that could be exempted from import and export sanctions, meaning using food as a weapon of war, or withholding food as a weapon of war. So I wanted to take this and cross-examine it with this, the Bible. And this is where our story begins. Revelation 13, 16 through 18. Also it causes all, both small and great, both rich and poor, both free and slave, to be marked on the right hand or the forehead, so that no one can buy or sell unless he is the mark, that is, the name of the beast, or the number of its name. This calls for wisdom. Let the one who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 666. Now, I'm not getting ready to bang this over your head, but what are the chances of the United Nations Security Council resolutions holding the number 666? That ties right into Revelation 13, 16 through 18. So what is this United Nations Security Council Resolution 666? And how the heck does it correlate with the Bible? Well, on August 2nd, 1990, Iraq, home of the original Babylonian Empire, invaded Kuwait over a major conflict involving the acquisitions of stolen petroleum through slant drilling. On that same day, the United Nations Security Council Resolution 660, which fueled by the Kuwait invasion, led to the demands that Iraq withdraw immediately and unconditionally from Kuwait. Iraq never responded. On August 6, 1990, the UK proposed an economic embargo against Iraq, which was adopted by the Council Resolution 661. This resolution resulted in a specific category of goods, such as military equipment, to be prevented for trade. In the Bible, Revelation 18, the fall of Babylon, verses 11 through 13 state that the merchants of the earth will weep and mourn over her because no one buys their cargoes anymore. Immediately after the UN 661 resolution of trade sanction had been adopted, Iraq announced that all foreign citizens in Iraq and Kuwait be held hostage. On August 18, 1990, the Security Council passed Resolution 664, which demanded that Iraq permit and facilitate the departure of nationals from third countries from within Iraq and Kuwait. Once again in Revelation 18, God requested that his people should not be held hostage in the now Kuwait area. Verses 4 states, Come out of her, my people, so that you will not share the sin, so that you will not receive any of her plagues. Merchant vessels in the Persian Gulf disregarded Resolution 661 and went ahead and loaded cargo anyway. On the 25th of August, 1990, the United Nations Security Council passed Resolution 665, demanding that without the immediate implementation of previous resolutions, the Council would authorize a naval blockage to enforce the embargo against Iraq. In turn, the merchant ships were blocked, causing some to leave the region, while others stayed behind and waited for a change in circumstances. But eventually, the devastation of war broke out. Revelation 18, verses 17 and 18 states that every sea captain and all who travel by ship, the sailors and all who earn their living from the sea, will stand far off. When they see the smoke of her burning, they will exclaim, was there ever a city like this great city? At last, the naval blockage effectively sealed off the coast, which led to the acute shortage of food and other humanitarian supplies sending Iraq into an even deeper crisis. On September 13, 1990, the United Nations Security Council passed Resolution 666, formulating the decision that the UN provide food and supplies to Iraq via organizations such as Red Cross, Oxfam, and other appropriate humanitarian agencies, welcoming every nation in the world to carry out its mission. 
Now, in Revelation 13, the beast out of the earth, verse 16 through 18, states, He also forced everyone, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave to receive a mark on his right hand or on his forehead. His number is 666. Many believe that the undeniable comparisons are prophecy for end times, while others relate it to an impressive coincidence. We want to know, what do you believe? This documentary will explore the beliefs and opinions of students, professors, religious enthusiasts, and people from diverse and interesting backgrounds to discover if there is anything behind this wild theory. And if so, what does it say about us and where we're headed? Chance? Coincidence? Prophecy? Let's find out. Hello, my name is Mariano Mendoza. My name is Gabriel Jarrett. My name is Phil Aguilar. My name is Dennis Gable. My name is DJ. My name is Luke Simmons. I believe in telling the truth. I believe that truth and beauty are worth dying for. I'll ask you again, maybe I had a minute to think about. What are your thoughts on chance, coincidence, and prophecy? Well, actually, I'd never given any thought to it. My thoughts on chance, coincidence, and prophecy are that they're not necessarily the same thing. Uh, chance and coincidence seem like things that happen more from our perspective, things that we didn't see coming, things that line up in random ways that we didn't expect. I believe in coincidence in terms of um, sort of a universal alignment, and I do think that there's a, a sort of a cosmic and magnetic attraction of all things that. You know, if you believe in something like the Big Bang Theory, we all sort of came from one place and are made up of the same material sort of mixed around in the cosmos over billions of years and we're just occupying one body that we have right now for a while. I guess chance is such an abstract concept that you have to believe in chance because chance is what, what we wake up with every day. Uh, my view on chance is um, I believe that God's given us another chance every day for new life. When it comes down to chance, by chance, this is going to happen or that's going to happen, I believe that all things are orchestrated by God. First of all, chance is no longer in the, in the, uh, the educated world described in terms of karma or fate or divine providence. In the language of science, we talk about probability. We talk about statistics. The laws of probability, as we know them now, 
were formulated about 500 years ago by a guy called Cardano's. So does everything happen for a reason? I think so. I think our, these, our lives are very important. I think we're here for a reason. We're here, we're meant to do something unique, something uh, only that we could do and achieve. When you look at the word coincidence, co, it means two. So if something happens more than twice, more than likely it's something that needs to be looked into and not just mere happenings. He's the guy that figured out the chance in a game of cards, chance in a game of dice, is not blind and disordered. It has a structure explained by mathematics. I think coincidence are parallels we draw in our own mind um, to make things palpable because if everything just seemed randomized, we would really lose focus on pretty much everything in life. My, my faith um, that has evolved through the last 17 years of my life always points me back to it's planned out. It's the way it's supposed to be. So um, I think by nature, the more that I've learned about myself and humanity, we're always searching for an answer. So when, when people say that phrase, everything happens for a reason, um, it does happen for a reason. We find comfort because we want to know. I think maybe we can perceive things as chance or coincidence sometimes because we don't see the whole picture. When it comes to my opinion and how I feel about coincidence, there definitely, I don't believe there's any coincidences and I've lived quite a few generations here now and I've watched it happen that this happened I thought as a coincidence or a deja vu or a eureka moment but then I realized that uh, there are no coincidences. It's all part of the great master plan. Uh, prophecy seems like something though that is, um, for it to be true prophecy, is something that comes from God. Um, oftentimes, biblically, if you understand the idea of prophecy, it's the idea of, of not just foretelling the future, but forthtelling, telling what's true. And so there's different kinds of prophecy. Some kind of prophecy is calling people towards what's true. But I believe in prophecy. I believe in uh, what's, what is truth and what, what has been true. And that's the word of God. When I hear prophecy, I immediately jump to religion because I think that a religious prophecy or, you know, the Mayans in 2012 saying their world was going to end, those are all, you know, prophetic societies that push this idea, their innate fears onto the rest of society, calling them prophecy. And I mean, honestly, if you point out one or two that have panned out, I'd love to hear them. I have not seen a prophecy truly come to fruition. You're either a prophet or you're not. So. If you claim to be a prophet and you're wrong once, that means you're not a prophet. You're just some crazy guy that thinks he knows what he's talking about. Other kinds of prophecies predicting the future. Um, I don't think that those things always necessarily relate. And I think there's a fourth category actually that I think about, which is providence, which is the arranging of history that God does um, in ways where he providentially rules the world um, and rules all things. So from God's perspective, I don't think there's any such thing as chance or coincidence. But from our perspective, being finite creatures that only see a little sliver of the world, we don't have the knowledge that God does. A prophet in the old sense, in the biblical sense, is someone who correctly tells you about the future. Someone who can see along that fourth dimension who knows what is to come. If I give an exam and someone gives me the right answer but can't show where they got it from, I figure either they cheated or they made a lucky guess. Prophecy has been around forever and it's a spiritual gift that uh, some people have been given and I believe in that wholeheartedly. Some of us, for some reason, our human minds des desire for us to be worshiped. Throughout history, we've always tried to be gods or something, or we want to be a god for some reason, and uh, and I feel that that's that's the biggest sin. But in the Bible, when Satan offered Jesus the whole world, and he said, "I'll give you the whole world," and uh, and Jesus said no. And so, for me as an atheist, I look at prophecy as uh, more of a an interesting parlor trick. Show me something that you call a coincidence and I will show you someone standing to benefit by your believing that no one is pulling the strings. What are my thoughts on United Nations Resolution 666? 666. 666. 666. Three sixes. 666. 666. 666. 666. Hey, wait. Um.
Here, come here, look at this real quick. Come to my camera. Come to my camera real quick. Look at it's flashing. 999. 999 or 666? Yeah. 999. 666. Uh, we're supposed to go to a doctor. We got a referral to a doctor. And his address was 666, you know, East Bell Road. And we're like, we're not going to that doctor. Uh, just, why would you give it that address? I just, it, you know, some of it feels like um, paranoia. But again, because of my beliefs, there's something to it. So I'm just not going to have anything to do with it. I believe that 666 is. Um two times three, 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 or six times one, 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 it's, it's a number. And, you know, I understand it has a deeply more embedded meaning to those who are uh, extremely religious. You know, I've had times where I've been at the at the deli and, you know, you pull a number and it says, it comes up 666 and you go, oh gosh, what does this mean? My, my meat is gonna be, <laughs> you know, uh, tainted in some way or something like that. And so I think that number always just raises speculation and makes people go, oh, I wonder, wonder if this means something. 666 has always been just, you know, bad numbers. Stay away from anything involving that. I mean, if, if I go to the grocery store and the total comes 666, I'll buy something else. I don't know that I believe that uh, three sixes in a row, whether it be the price you pay for something being uh, $6.66 or anything like that being evil, but I do, uh, I do believe that there is something, uh, something evil about what the numbers will represent someday. When it comes to that particular number with that resolution, I think maybe it's a particularly wicked trick of fate um, or you know, coincidence, as we were talking about before. I doubt it's really prophecy. Wow, the number 666 means to me something that's anti-Christ, uh, before knowing much about God's word, I knew it was something that had to be evil, the sign. Uh, I knew it was always something negative, but as I've studied the word of God, I realized that that is the, the sign, the mark of the Antichrist, the beast that's going to come in the future. I, I don't believe it has anything to do with, with the end all be all. I think 666 could have been a representation of evil, it could have been a representation of, of hell, it could have been a representation of the devil himself. But at the end, I think 666 was intended to encompass the idea of the inverse of good. It's it's not good whenever you see it, and that's why it kind of it snowball effect into this um, apocalyptic number. Is sometimes referred to as the number of the beast. We use that name partly from the book of Revelations. When, it, when Revelation said the number of the beast is a number of man, uh, many have also found this in science. When we pass away, we turn into carbon. Now it's fascinating that carbon has six protons, six neutrons, and six electrons. There's so much debate about Revelation in general and that sign of the beast, 666 in particular, that I think it's very hard with any real certainty to draw a very firm connection. Most people that try to draw firm connections on anything in the book of Revelation, other than the fact that Jesus is king and on the throne, most people end up wrong. So 666 is basically, uh, I see it as end times, antichrist, the mark of the beast. In the Old Testament, when they put you know the first five books of the Bible together, uh, the, the scientists at Hebrew University figured out that there was a code and there was one prophecy in that code that says you will not be able to decipher this until the computer's invented. You can look that up. Connection. I, I don't see a great deal of connection, partly because of how I interpret that passage. Uh, for one thing, uh, that passage in Revelation 13 different manuscripts uh, in the original text indicate that the number might not even be 666, it might be 616. Um, in fact, some of the earliest manuscripts say that. You're comparing a piece of literature that's uh, over 3,000 years old with a document drafted by a body of people. It, the, I think the parallels are in that a body of people did this and that it has equal impact that it had before. So I would call that a coincidence, not prophecy. I'd say it's a mixture of of chance, coincidence, and uh, mindlessness. Uh, folks just not considering the, uh, uh, the implications that, that it brings to much of the population. Now, here's an idea. What if the same people that passed this law 
also had ties in with the people that put together those books in the Bible, particularly the New Testament. Whereas the New Testament would act more like a playwright or a script. And what if all the United Nations was doing was following that script? The United Nations Security Council Resolution 666 was something I was never even aware of until now. And when I read Revelation 13, 16 through 18 in the Bible, I, 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 was, I was full of joy to be honest with you because it was like another eye-opening to information that I, I didn't have as a Christian. So I was thankful and actually pretty excited. I think that the resolution has mostly to do with a particular situation in Iraq and Kuwait, from what I can tell of it, not an expert on it. Um, rather than something about the Im implications on a global scale. What's interesting about writings like this is that they're written in, in just enough of an obscure way to cause logical leaps of inference. And so you see that logical leap of inference is very mathematical and direct. Um, and that is, you know, somebody, I have a math background, that's what I would see it as. And that's the interesting thing about prophecy and religion is that it's open to constant change and in interpretation. Although we're all reading the same thing, we're thinking different thoughts. Um, and we have different histories and we have different understandings. The other thing is, as I've studied that passage, it seems like the mark of the, the beast described there um, comes following an antichrist. And that antichrist is someone that's very visible and very known um, and very clearly an antichrist. And so it's hard to imagine that um, the, this mark of the beast would be so debated. It seems like when this mark of the beast happens, it will be clear and obvious and known rather than something that, you know, a bunch of conspiracy theorists sort of debate about. Is this the sign of the beast? Is this not? You can roughly locate any community in the world somewhere along a scale running all the way from democracy to despotism. Honestly, uh I think even most people in this country would agree with me. I don't trust our government. Um, they're not for the people. They're not by the people. Uh, they're by the one percenters or the multi-trillionaires, uh, the people that have power and money. I, I just don't trust. I'm, I'm, I'm afraid. Well, I can't say that I trust the government. Um, I trust in God. Uh, the government's made up of men. Um, I think. I think as, as human beings, we always feel like we're, we're doing the best, but uh, no, I, I ultimately don't put my faith in government. I cannot say unequivocally that I trust them, and that's surely for the fact that with megadata, metadata, and all the different venues to which I have no idea and no protection against them, it no longer is a democratic state that I live in where my vote counts and my vote is equalized, it gets diluted through public officials. We go up the chain even further, by the time the laws are being made, the body of ideals that I thought that I was represented or representing or having represented for me can be entirely different than my personal views at that point. I believe that the United Nations has always kind of been an undercover tool of the enemy of the people of God and of planet Earth. I both fear and trust the government. That may feel like a non-answer, but um, obviously anytime there's people in power, uh, there's uh, people that are going to abuse that power and abuse it in ways that are uh, profitable to themselves and hurtful to other people. At the same time, I think that the United States government, at least, is one of the most trustworthy governments in the world, uh, for sure not perfect. Um, and so I think that because of some of the checks and balances that exist in government, I have more reason to, to trust it. So I think that typically the government's more trustworthy than a lot of uh, people, uh, especially on the right, tend to think. And I think the government is less trustworthy than people on the left tend to think. Um, you know, I believe everything should be taken with a grain of salt truth, unless you experience it for yourself and you have unequivocal evidence that what you're experiencing is true, then beyond that, there's always a reasonable doubt. And especially when it comes to all of the, the recent light of, you know, Snowden and we have all these, they call them whistleblowers, that expose the uh, dishonesty of a body of governments. It's just so sad that our government is all full of lies, and, but you know, uh, the, little by little we're exposing the truth. Well, I don't think anything happens by 
by chance. I think there's always a purpose behind everything that happens in our lives. Yeah, I don't believe in chance or coincidence, and I do believe the Bible, and God's not a God of chance. And I also believe in prophecy. It's biblical. Jesus talked a lot about uh, different things that would happen before his coming, so I like prophecy, and I believe it's real. <laughs> I know what the United Nations, the, the bend of the United Nations is against Christianity and against Israel. I think things are meant to happen because they're supposed to, like, like I didn't even know what you guys were, what you guys were talking about right now, and I just happened to walk out of the building and run into you guys. Like, I don't know if that was chance or by God. I do think that, that God is at hand with these um, warnings and signs to protect people, and in order to do that, um, he'll intervene in different ways and um, stand in the gap to kind of let us know that something's up. I believe that the United Nations Security Council Resolution 666 is a clear intervention and opportunity by coming from God Almighty to warn us, to comfort us, depending on your situation in life. Uh, but most importantly, I think it's to bring people back to reality, that there is a God. History is, in fact, going somewhere. Now, I had the opportunity of sitting down with James Na, a gentleman that has been studying the subject matter for over 20 years. It was very interesting to listen to his perspective. I'm here today with James Na, and um, we're having a, a little bit of a debate over these documents that we've presented here in this documentary. We have one, we have the United Nations Security Council Resolution 666, and Jim has uh, brought along another document. Maybe you want to explain that one. This is the United Nations Security Council 666. When this came into existence, it was controlled. They did not print it in the newspapers, even though I'd been following it on the front page of the Denver Post and Rocky Mountain News. Uh, and I thought that was very unusual, and Dan rather failed to mention it uh, because of the 666 factor. Uh, also, the 666 factor is to, it's about controlling food. But this is exactly the opposite of the 666 that's so famous because of the book of Revelation, the mark of the beast 666. This 666 is the exact opposite of that 2,000 year old document in the scriptures, the book of Revelation. And uh, this one is about saving Israel. The next one will be about destroying Israel. Well, this 666 document, which is by a world uh, ad hoc world government, the United Nations, uh, is designed to give food to the ones who are suffering and deny food to the armies that are rushing south to destroy Israel and everybody else in their wake that isn't on their side. Uh, Napoleon said uh, an army marches on its belly. I mean, if, if the, if the stomach's full, they'll do well. If they're empty and starving, they got to try to find food. They're not going to be fighting. You have this document, the United Nations Security Council Resolution 666, and you have this other document from Princeton University that talks about a random number generating machine. Yes. And you think these two documents have something to do with one another? Absolutely, they do. They place random number generators around the world uh, under the supposition they were experimenting to see if a huge monumental event, either evil or disastrous or good, happens. And they would cause these random number generators to synchronize. The other name for this project is called the Global Consciousness Project. It has a horizontal line, and being random numbers, they expected the graph to be above the uh, average expected, and uh, within the range of variance was quite liberal. Uh, and it did. It was just going happily along on what's called a drunkard walk, trying to keep on the sidewalk, the straight line, you know, it's all over the place. And they noticed one day it started spiking a little bit. And, uh, and then it spiked more and more, and it was just a perpetual rise, way beyond the expectations of all probability. And they were wondering what was going on. You know, they're checking the news and everything, and, and what's going on here? And uh, it spiked, and it was way above the range of variance, any, any, any possible rational variance. It seemed impossible. And then it made a big spike, and a plane flew into a twin tower. Now, remember that this happened three or four hours before. So what? massive consciousness could have triggered those random number generating devices and the Global Consciousness Project. And I submitted to them, I don't think this was human consciousness that, that it was recording. After the Gulf War was over, 
the heir apparent was going to be Osama bin Laden. And he called for a major, major attack on the United States on or about the anniversary of this document, which is the United Nations Security Council, the Resolution 666. And it happened uh, 10, 11 years later, and it just happened to be September 11th instead of September 13th for reasons of security. So you think because of the anniversary date, these two documents are parallel? They are. Osama, because, because, Osama because bin Laden said they were. He wanted a major attack on the United States on the anniversary of the United Nations Security Council resolution, which was 13 September 1990. And of course, the, uh, the attack came on September 11th. I'm understanding the correlation here. This is getting back at this. Yes. Right? This was retribution upon us, the United States, the major player in the Gulf War which is the United Nations Security Council Resolution 666. This is a mercy, this is a warning from God. When you see the 666 coming in a world government, doc again, the final resolution as we call it, um, it's not about the Antichrist so much because when the Antichrist comes, guess what? Jesus Christ is not far behind. And the Antichrist will attack Israel, he'll have a great deal of success, Jesus Christ will intervene and it's over. And I don't see that there is anything that could have triggered the random number generators other than something that is not human. This is about Jesus Christ, folks. And uh, this document, this series of documents is a mercy from God. It's a warning and it's also a comfort to believers because things are going to get very tough for believers in the future if the Bible prophecy plays out and I'm absolutely confident that it will. My name is Ashley Dowd. I am a high school English teacher as well as a community college professor. Hi, I'm Eric Short and I'm an office manager uh, for a healthcare organization. I'm Michael Harrelson and I'm retired. Uh, my name is Ryan Dowd. I'm a business development manager for IT company. Uh, my name is Mike Corbett. I am a account manager for a technological company. My name is Wendy West. I am a studio director. I run several radio stations and I produce 22 shows a week and I have my own show. Hi, my name is Donna Kafer. I serve as chaplain at the Arizona State Legislature. Thanks, guys, for coming. 666 has a, a bunch, a, a ton of different connotations uh, attached to that. A lot of people. Uh, how in the hell could this have been chance? Coincidence, prophecy, free will versus fate? What do you guys think? Well, I was, I was going to, to say that uh, my belief in it, first of all, is I, I, I do believe it's, it's prophecy from the Bible and Revelation fulfilling itself because the prophecy was was written over 2,000 years ago you know I don't I don't know that I can say that the United Nations uh, is in fact the new world order which is, is predicted I can't say that there's going to be uh, someone rise up out of the United Nations who's going to be the Antichrist I can't say that because I don't know that no, but I do know that it was written 2,000 years ago that in order to buy, sell, or trade, there would be a world ruler whom you would have to have his permission or his mark to buy, sell, or trade. And that is, in fact, reflected in this. Uh, and I'm not a learned man. I'm, not, I'm a simple man, but I'm a man of faith. And I know that what I've always been taught and what I've, I've grown to, to watch fulfill itself is I think that it's it's all a matter of prophecy following in its proper steps. I don't think it's random. I don't think it's coincidence. You know, I, I, because I don't believe in coincidence. I, I think that everything has to be. you got to be uh, careful with the word prophecy. Well, I come from a very unusual background. I come from an atheist dad, a Jehovah's Witness mom, and I produce three religious shows a week at my job. So I see so many different angles of this. I, you know, I see it from, you know, my Revelations uh, preacher, I do her show, she thinks that our, the Pope is the Antichrist uh, because he's trying to bring us all together into one world order. And um, so, but for me, growing up with an atheist background and then Jehovah's Witness cult background and then learning from all these different religious backgrounds, I can see it from everybody's point of view that I can see that it is more like a revelations or, or a prophecy fulfilled. But I can also see the chance. Um, 
I think given enough time, all prophecies will be fulfilled one, one time or another. It might take a couple thousand years, might take more. But eventually it's all going to happen. What you, ha what you really have to look at is, is the dynamics and there's more to it. You mentioned that the one belief is it's the Pope. Well, is that just a random thought? Why the Pope? And you have to look at, there's a numerical value here, 666. It's, it's not just any number. Those numbers are given for a reason. And in the Hebrew uh, teaching of the gematria, the Hebrew alphabet, each letter is assigned a number. Each denomination or cult or variant will come with their own teachings and their own background. The Babylonians have their own numerical system. Uh, this world is devised in the universe made up of yes, numbers. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm not, I grew up Catholic, Reformed Catholic. I'm like, I feel like people always use either the Bible or whatever faith they have, use that to support whatever argument they have. Um, so, you know, it's just, to me, it's like chalk it up to another thing that people are like, oh, this is a sign of this. And it's like, well, then, you know, nothing's happening. So, I'm like, the government sucks, but I don't necessarily know that has to do with anything. As far as getting back to the whole thing about the Antichrist, I wouldn't any more try to identify the Antichrist than I would try to tell you who the baby's daddy is on Mari. You know, it's, it's, I don't know. <laughs> but, then, but, but, just as, but just as an interjection, you know, it's, it's Funny that people have, have attributed that 666 number to the Antichrist as I long as I can. Uh, well, you know, using numerology, giving every letter in your name a, a specific value, and you add them all up, and his comes out to 666. Now, I'm not saying that Ronald Reagan was Antichrist. Was George Bush. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. His, and his, his vice president was George Bush, and at the time when this came out, Right. And this resolution adapted itself. Right. George Bush was the president. Was the president did not was fighting the Iraq War. Well, and, and, and I have no problem believing that, that George Bush, being part of the cabal, I mean, senior, not even, not junior, right. senior, right. And Prescott Bush's kid that stole Geronimo's skull, or skull and bones. You know, I have no problem believing that he's part of a cabal that's in charge of a one world order. He even addressed a one world order when he spoke to the UN. Uh, so I have no problem following and saying, you know, there may be a connection there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So why do you think that maybe they skipped out on publicizing this re resolution? Well, I think that uh, probably that they skipped out on publicizing it because, A, people in the media are, are not profoundly religious and, and do not want to give religious value to anything. And in fact, most media will deny religion as, as before they support it. And you know, I can't say that's right or wrong. I'm just saying that the, the media is controlled. It's just not by accident again. That Fox News is owned by an Australian. You know, that's one side of, of, of the coin. You know, it's not, it's not by accident that George Soros controls CNN and everything on that side. But again, as I said, you know, two wings, one bird. It's that's still right. the same bird. That's right. Yeah. I think you're touching on awareness, which I think is what's important. I think is what you're trying to accomplish, is that um, whether I, the extremes exist, the wings of the bird, right, they exist. There's the, the, the ones who are gonna create all the controversy, and then there's going to be the other side which is gonna say, but it doesn't exist. And I think there's always going to be a black and a white. And I think what we need to announce is that there is a gray, and that there's this middle area of us needing to be aware. Whether this is or not, I don't know, but I'd like to be aware of it, and I'd like it to be known. I why why weren't we, why were we made aware of it? Who? And that's why this is unfortunate, right? Which is good that you're bringing it up because it's not aware. And um, so I'm glad you're making it aware to yes. us. That's great. I think being aware is key. Yeah. Well, and I think the media in a lot of cases doesn't want you to be aware. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, and not, just, and not just uh, about right. things of faith. I mean, they, they may not want you to know yeah, about the next project. If we go back to this, this 666, this, this United Nations resolution had an agenda. And the agenda was yeah. oil. Right. Okay. Right. The agenda was is the U.S. going into Iraq and, you know, freeing the Muslim state uh, in order to, to get oil. Sounds good. 
But you know, this is not it is part keep, keeping yeah. oil safe for us is not a new idea. This it's not a good been, idea either. It, it, not a good idea no. or a new <laughs> idea. I mean, this has been going on way back. So it's not our From it's another current. point of view, it's like, you know, why there are no 13th floors on buildings? So I think it's, you know, for some people, it could be superstitious. So I think, you know, maybe media doesn't want to alarm and put, you know, everybody up in arms like, oh my God, what's going on? I think it's easier if they just skipped that number and went on to the 667. Mm -hmm. Just like there's no 13th floor, you go to the 14th floor. Okay, so why didn't they? Well, did they skip 13? You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. like you said, because I thought the same thing. I'm like, did they skip, did they skip the 13th resolution? Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's... Well, they they did, and the precedent was set, and okay, we can yeah. skip 666. Yeah, but was there an ulterior motive to the 666 resolution? Um, you got to look at, it says too, 666 is an amendment of 661, which was right. an amendment of 660. It, exactly. it was a so in, in the chain of events, was it a landmark thing? No, it was amending something that might, right. maybe was already covered. And I don't know. Maybe they did on purpose wasn't to watching alarm. the news when this came out. Like, exactly. It is the fact that I agree that, you know, that 666 in and of itself, to me, is reflective of prophecy fulfilling itself. And whether or not everybody agrees doesn't matter because the fact is, is that knowing it, I can't prevent it. As we discovered on the table, there's nothing in the world I can do to stop that from coming into being. However, it does give me forewarning to prepare myself for the other prophecies that follow, which of course would be the, the three and a half years, the seven years of tribulation, but the first three and a half years uh, are going to be extremely rough, and I, I think that that's something you might want to be prepared for. You know, I mean, creating an awareness, uh, asking questions, you know, having people question their own beliefs. I mean, I guess to some degree a little bit to say, like, I mean, is this really happening, or could this really be true or real, or is it a coincidence? Is it fate, or is it a prophecy? I mean, really, I mean, like, I mean, like, until you brought this up a few months back when we were talking about this. I didn't even think about it. Again, awareness, same line that we are aware that we, that things that are hushed and put under covers will be revealed. Because really we have a right to know, um, not just from the media, but for ourselves. It will get people thinking. It will get matters like this that were just brushed under, under the rug to be noted and to be more out there for people to learn about. So. Yeah, you can never know too much. Keep learning about it. At all those, we, we down through the ages, and they're leading up to this final, the well, final resolution, if yeah. you will. Yeah. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, so uh, we'll just wrap this up. All right. Uh, thank you all for coming out today. We appreciate it. Uh, and then I'll just do some quick individual interviews of how you guys felt this went. Um, you can speak your mind without anybody interrupting you. And then have a wonderful Saturday. Cool. All right, thanks, guys. Yeah. Another thing, actually, we did a well, I think it went rather well. You know, I was amazed that we didn't have any knockdown, you know, blowout fights. But uh, but everything, everyone was respectable and respecting, and I enjoyed it because of the fact that everybody actually listened to each other's opinions. I thought there was a lot of uh, great dialogue related to religion, uh, a lot of great um, conjecture related to six six six. Um, and the discussion of this UN resolution. I thought there was a lot of great give and take, a lot of uh, great dialogue, uh, willingness to communicate. I think it went really well. Uh, it was nice that we had so many different perspectives. It's, it's hard to be in a room with all one idealism, you know what I mean? So it's nice to see several different people who believe in different things. I thought it was great. I mean, I always love hearing other people's point of view, even if I disagree with it. I mean, I think that's the best way to I don't know, live life, so to speak, is to be open to other people's ideas, even if you don't agree with it. It was an interesting discussion, indeed, and um, I'm glad I've been made aware of it. That was sort of um, my takeaway from the whole experience. I have been born and raised in a Christian church. I've been made aware of the number 666. I have been made aware of um, Satan and the Book of Revelation, so I am very knowledgeable on those elements and yet I've also been a part of communities where they've taken it a bit too far but I've also been a part of communities where they don't acknowledge it at all and um, I think it needs to be acknowledged I think it needs to be something that we look into and we not stay 
um, blind to it. So I was glad that that happened. Well, my, my belief is the fact that it is biblical prophecy fulfilling itself. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, to me, if you, if you take words that were written 2,000 years ago or 2,500 years ago, and you see them unfolding today step by step, to me, logically, you would have to say that that's prophecy because, you know, a man sitting in a cave <laughs> didn't just randomly imagine all this and suddenly it's coming to be. I was afraid it's going to like offend somebody because sometimes I think people get a little overly into prophecy and that's something that was said 2,000 years ago. I mean, I believe anything can happen over time and we really don't know the future. I do believe in science, but I'm also a spiritual person. So it's such a, a weird, such a weird chance, I guess. I don't, maybe it is chance, I don't know. I don't believe that the Bible has prophecy and that I think they're all going to come true. I think that's part of the promise of the Bible being true for me. Uh, I just don't like, as a person, projecting that onto other people because I think it's a slippery slope. So could it be the fulfillment of prophecy? It certainly could be, uh, but I'm not gonna make any guarantees on either side of that. But, but I, my thought is there are no incidents, just random. I, I think everything is a God incident, but that's my personal view. And I think even with free will it, it, and choice that happens, it all comes together. And uh, ultimately, the way that God wants it to develop and to end. I mean, I don't know. It's, I feel like I see both sides of the coin. You know, like there's always, you know, I see people, like you had talked about during the discussion about 666 and now it pops up in everyday life and my ex-girlfriend said the number 53 followed her everywhere and she would literally point it out to me and I would see it and I'd be like I know but it's probably just coincidence could it have been something more than that of course even though I can tie it into the number 666 through through my belief in the Bible that really isn't the point the point is is that this isn't something we can do anything about is that my knowing about it won't stop it you're knowing about it won't stop it. But what it will do is it will give us all the opportunity to prepare, our, to prepare ourselves for the things that are forthcoming. And we can either ignore them and wake up surprised one day, or we can say, yeah, that's right, I believe that if I take this step today, I'll avoid this consequence tomorrow. I don't, I don't think people should live in that kind of fear. I think we'll know. Um, I have I know and I believe that it's not going to be a big mystery. I think it'll be very, very evident that this is the beast and this is his mark. What do you think of the purpose of this documentary is? I think the purpose of this documentary would be to, to get people talking. Uh, fully, fully and on free will, I believe that that's part of the design of a loving God, um, to be frank there. Uh, fate is, I don't know, maybe a misnomer. You could call it what you want. I think there is things that just happen and there isn't a necessary rhyme or reason or an overarching you know, architecture that designed for that to happen. Some things, I think, just happen. There is chance and accident uh, in the world. I'd like people to not be asleep, but to take seriously the world around them. Well, some of the things, if you, if you think that there's going to be a seven years of trial and tribulation, as, as the Bible says, you can start putting aside foods and waters and preparing places to go hide in case of uh, imminent attacks. Food is an act of war. I don't know that I got that from the resolution, but I think as you read through kind of what the effects were afterward, it certainly became that way. Um, and that necessity to clear the the ability to get food from an outside source being cleared by some other power is sort of an interesting parallel to those verses in Revelation that, that are mentioned here. Well, um, I teach at a public school, and so sadly, in public schools, we are not allowed to mention God. We are not allowed to necessarily mention spirituality. And um, it's very unfortunate. It's something that actually eats away at me on quite an intimate level and something that is a conflict with me on a daily basis. Um, I want my students to be aware of it. I'm supposed to be teaching them and for me this is something that's pivotal to me and I can't talk about it. I think everything does happen for a reason. You just gotta figure out what that reason is.
You're seeing the first picture showing the destruction following the Iraqi invasion of Kuwait. We've heard reports of murders and rapes blamed on Iraqi soldiers, but these are the first images of the war-torn area. When you stop to think about the power of God, we cannot even imagine. The earthquake in Turkey was horrible. We've had horrible ones in California, around the world. Also, the terrible storms in Europe that uprooted all those thousands and thousands and thousands of trees in France. And that perfect storm that I was telling you about is going to see the convergence of so many factors that are even now bringing this planet to its knees. You know, there's this whole notion of end of times that I think is pervasive in a lot of religions, particularly Judeo-Christian uh, Judeo religions. And, you know, without something like this, you do actually run the risk of having an end of times. I think history is going to a pre-appointed end. Um, I think that end is the return of Jesus Christ to reign and rule over all things and bring in a new heaven and a new earth. Um, but the details surrounding that are things that I don't think anyone can really know. And I really believe that uh, these are the times, you know, and uh, not to scare anybody, but I think these are the times leading to that end. And so I believe that some things have been left to be revealed in these last days. I believe we're in those last days, in those last times. I'm getting ready to go to Israel again this year, and there's things that have happened that I believe that uh, we're going to learn more about that resolution, more about what that council's decision, and especially as we see the battle going on between uh, the Arabs and the Israelis and the, the time clock on the last days that are happening right now, I believe we'll get to know more and it'll be publicized. There's going to be a mass infusion, a declaration of wisdom. I believe that uh, the world is going to end. There is a given time. None of us know that time, but God does. And I truly believe that, that that's written in history. It's, it's written in the books and it's going to happen. My personal beliefs are epistemological, so everything has origin. And I think that a lot of times those origins can outlive us. And that's, that's the whole point. It's the concept of lineage. If your legacy can live on, then you've succeeded in your lifetime. And epistemologically, you can always find the origin to any story, to any person, to any idea. There's always the beginning point. But just like there's always the beginning, there's always the end to it. There's the point in which those times converge. My ultimate belief is that what we know to be Earth and humanity, uh, humankind, history, will come to, to an end. Uh, I don't think any religious text tells us. I think the, the text even more so says that we have no idea, uh, which leads us back full circle to the idea of prophecy and, and whether or not there will be signs and things that can allow us to at least be prepared um, that there is an end and that the end is, is happening. Uh, my guess is that uh, it would be just like a lot of things in, uh, in light of spiritual battle where Satan doesn't come uh, as an angel of darkness, he masquerades as an angel of light. And um, so it wouldn't be surprising at all that something significant would not seem significant to people. That seems to be the way that Satan operates. The history is in fact going somewhere. It is not freewheeling. God did not just wind up the clock and set it down and just let it run until it runs out. Uh, this is a very special planet. You know, the end of the world is, is inevitable. We, we learn this through science, through, through learning about stars, how they are born, how they live, and how they die. So we have different categories of stars. So very similarly, you know, it's, it's not incorrect in the assumption that our society is going to end. As to when that happens, that's, that's the chance. We currently live under a mutually assured destruction world that if one person pulls the trigger, everybody else pulls the trigger. There are an infinite number of truths possible. A mathematician will tell you that you can make up an infinity of things which can be proven to be true. You can make up an infinity of things which can be proven to be false. And you can make up an infinity of things which are true or false depending on your assumption. I cannot know an infinite number of truths. Therefore, there will always be things which are true and important which I don't know. There will always be things which are true and verifiable and in the United Nations Security Council and on the pages of the New York Times and the Washington Post which most 
educated people will never know because you see time may be finite or infinite but our days are numbered i i think we um, as a human race our eyes are opened information is shown and exposed to us gradually and um, I think the timing's fabulous. I'm excited about it. I think it's easy, even for well-meaning Christians, to get really kind of distracted by the current events of the news and lose the focus on the reality that Jesus reigns. And we're not in God we trust. We're in uh, self we trust. We're in uh, what's popular we trust. We don't, we're, we don't know who we trust anymore. And God exposes everything in His timing, not our timing, His timing. So right now could be the time. But uh, for our next generation, they're going to have to watch out and they're going to have to get educated and be on top of their stuff. Because if you, if you don't fight for your freedoms, they'll be taken away. And to debate the fact of is there evil or is there good, I think everybody knows internally. <laughs> we feel it. There's a spiritual realm around us. There's a spiritual uh, plane that I don't know that we can fully perceive visually, but it's, um, it's there. We can look at different theories and, and one can label people conspiracy theorists and whatnot, and then it can become a form of a distraction. That's one thing that we don't want. We want to use this as a tool, as a tool to educate, and make one aware. It's because then when, uh, when things go south and, and uh, you know, wars break out and actual uh, bombs start exploding, Everybody looks around and goes, well, how'd this happen? But I, I think for the majority of the population, unless it's a spectacular event and uh, we see fire and flame and death and destruction, I think people have a very short attention span and they will forget the most important teachings uh, of their particular faith. We have a choice. We can make a world which is hell on earth, or we can make a world which is heaven on earth, and that is a decision too important to be left to the United Nations Security Council. Over the course of the documentary, we've explored and visited with various walks of life. And one thing's for sure, we have a lot to learn. While it's simply impossible to prove, our one commonality is faith. Faith in our own individual beliefs. So now it's up to you. Chance, coincidence, prophecy. What do you think? And more importantly, what do you believe?